Thanks for staying with us. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And right now we're looking at another headline that is Ganduje to be arraigned on bribery charges in Kanu. Remember, Ganduje is the former governor of Kanu State. And uh, he was... Uh, uh, it was the reason that we had what we used to call the gandola, uh, gandola, and uh, we didn't hear much about that case. But right now, the Kano state government is trying to probe what he did uh, while he was the uh, state governor of Kano state. Even some people have come up to say that a lot of other people needs to be probed. But this is the immediate one, and the governor is interested in this. So we we'll have as our guest the. A national spokesperson, Coalition of United Political Parties, CUPP, or CUP as some people uh, call it, uh, Comrade Mark Adebayo. Good morning and welcome to the program, Comrade Adebayo. Yeah, good morning and good morning, viewers. Mark Adesala. Mm -hmm. Same to you. Okay, Ganduje, who is the current national chairman of APC, is going to be probed for what he did while in office in Kano State? Well, thank you so much. Uh, the first thing I want to say is that um, all Nigerians are aware that uh, corruption in the body politic of Nigeria is a cancer. It's a malignant cancer that has divided all manner of uh, attempts to, to stop it, to read it in, and, uh, and that is because of institutional failures. Now, I had your your immediate, uh, uh, the other guest uh, before I came on talking about EFCC being a post-mortem organization. I agree 100% with him. You know, oftentimes the EFCC acts like uh, the typical Nigerian traffic uh, controller, the, the traffic police. Here in Lagos, you see the last mile of traffic police. They will go and hide somewhere, allow you, allow the driver to commit a traffic offense, and then they will now jump into the front, or they will, they will start pursuing the car um, with the possibility of even getting an uh, accident while they are pursuing it. Rather than prevention, you see somebody wanted to make a wrong talk, rather than tell, telling the person, look, you can't go that way, this is the way to go, you go and hide somewhere, allow that person to commit that traffic offense, and then you begin to pursue the person. And then, Pursuing the person is just for your own personal gain because they collaborate from the person allowing you to go. And that's the same way that EFCC has been behaving. They, will, they, they, they do not believe in the principle of profession is better than cure. But of course, it's not necessarily, it's not totally, absolutely the fault of the EFCC. Because we have an organization that's called NFIU, Nigeria Financial Intelligence Unit. That is the, the organization, that's the agency principally responsible for monitoring financial trans transactions, movement of funds, and the rest of that, including issues that have to do uh, with money laundry and co. You understand? That, that is it. That, that Nigeria Financial Intelligence Unit is principally and fundamentally responsible for releasing intelligence to the other corruption agencies like the EFCC and ICPC. Of course, the EFCC and the ICPC do have their own intelligence units that are supposed to be monitoring. And that is why it baffles one. That before this Ganduje issue, someone, a, a central bank governor, a Mayfield, could sit over a heavy and unprecedented corruption corporation for so long to the tune of trillions of naira and dollars, and then nobody did anything to him while he was on, in office. He didn't have immunity. The CPM governor does not have immunity. So the Ganduje issue, um, she goes a long way to tell you. Look at since the time 2017 that uh, the, the issue, you know, that viral video we had DJ where he became Gandola and was putting, you know, millions of uh, mint dollars into his Baba Riga and into some envelope. That was 2017 to December, around December 1, 2017. That, that thing happened. Buhari was the president then. Buhari who was, who purportedly came to fight uh, corruption. He looked at the it was interviewed, it was asked the question about uh, Ganduje, that you are supposed to be an anti-corruption president, but uh, what is happening about Ganduje? The president laughed. He laughed it off. He said, uh, I don't know the kind of uh, technology they used to to project Ganduje in that, in that manner. Didn't Ganduje have uh, aids and code that he could use to go and collect? Why would he be collecting by himself? The president dismissed it as a joke. And once that happened, what do you expect uh, the EFCC to do? The EFCC 
didn't do anything about it because the president had already said and already put a lie to it that uh, it was not real, that it was more or less like a, a kind of a, a cloning of a, of a video. So what, what did we expect the EMCC to do? The EMCC is under the purview of the authority of the Attorney General of the Federation. So they couldn't have done something against the interest or the opinion of the president. Who, 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 who fights corruption and says, and comes to, to defend and, and comes to defend corruption. And, but that was the Guari legacy for you. And then EFCC, in, in most cases, as we have discovered, your immediate uh, past guest spoke about a case, you know, lying for 10 years without EFCC as much as doing anything about it. That is it. Until they have political prompting, when they want to victimize and persecute an individual, probably a former governor, a former minister, it is when you want to politically persecute someone. That is when you see the EFC going on overdrive because they have instruction from, from, from above to go after this particular individual, to go after this particular person. That is when you see them uh, you know, working on overdrive to make sure they persecute, they make sure they arrest, they make sure they detain, they make sure they, they blackmail and do everything against one particular individual. The corruption that we they they, 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 are, they, are, they supposedly supposedly fight in Nigeria is a is kind of political corruption. They, it, it is it has been politicized. The operations and activities of the EFCC, you know, often has been politicized. And then when you see them going after a former government in, in a very bold manner and address of that, it is because there is a political interest from the powers that be. To prosecute that person, maybe that person serves as a kind of political threat to them. Then they go after the person. And I must commend the Kano State government. Why? How do I mean? You know, we have been clamoring and advocating for a disaggregation. The 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 EFCC and other anti-corruption agencies need to be on board. Good. Each state must have its own anti-corruption agency to be able to deal with the issues of corruption in within their state. Because the federal government sometimes uses the EFCC to... You can see that when Dr. Sojo was, was in power, he used the EFCC to impeach and imprison governors who are not doing his bidding. No, we don't... That kind of thing cannot be allowed to continue. There, there must be a disaggregation. The EFCC must be unbundled. Let EFCC and ICPC, thank God the current president has said that they are merging the two together. Let them deal with issues that have to do with federal corruption cases. Let state anti-corruption agencies deal with their own uh, corruption issues. So that the federal government does not use the federal mind to, to continue to oppress states. We operate a federal system. That we have federal, a constitutional federalism as a, as a country. We should allow that to happen. Because this idea of allowing... Imagine if the, you could see that the FCC could not even go after Gambridge. But now, the Kano State Anti-Corruption Agency has the technology, has the confidence to go after him now. Whether we appear in court on 17th or not, it's left to be seen. But if he doesn't, some of us at the level of the opposition and at the level of the, of the civil society organization, we are coming after them because they need to do the needful. It is, the Kano State government is now helping the federal government to do what they refuse to do. And that is why it is necessary in order to, to remove the partiality, in order to, to remove the... Uh, the persecution, in order to remove the political victimization of either present or former uh, office, public office holders who might seem not to be in the good books of the people in power, and then you go after them. Let each state have, everybody's clamoring for state police now, let each state also have its own anti-corruption agency. The Lagos state government has passed and the, and the, the, the national, the state assembly, and I think the government has ascended to it for Lagos State Anti-Corruption Agency, which has not been established today. I think the, the, the Lagos State government needs to tell us why they have not done that, because it is necessary for each state to have their own. Look at what is happening in Safara State now. You know, the current uh, administration in Safara State have indicted, has indicted the immediate, immediate past governor of that state, who is now the current. Minister of State for Defense. It is pathetic when you people have an, uh, corruption allegations or indictments on them, and then you go ahead to appoint them into sensitive political offices in the country. It's, it's such a shame. It's quite unfortunate. But I do hope that the issue of Gabriel will be laid to rest by proper prosecution at the 
court of competent jurisdiction because that is the law in Kano State, and that law stands for that state. And whoever has been caught to have corruptly enriched himself or herself in that state, look at what I mean, this is a shame. We have a former governor, his wife, his kid, his son, or something, you know, a whole family and friends, all of them now have been caught to have engaged in this uh, corruption issue. Because we are talking about a uh, bribery, that $5 million video that went viral, and then they are talking about, uh, you know, some contract uh, fraud and rest of that manner of things happen. 500 billion naira, he left 500 billion naira uh, debt for the current administration in Kano State. It is, how, how do we expect the country to progress like that? And now he's the national chairman of, <laughs> of the ruling party. And these cases are not cases for today or yesterday, or day after, or day before yesterday, these are cases of, of three, four, five years that these things have been in public purview, but the, the past administration refused to do anything about it, and then the current administration ensure that this man has become the national chairman of the ruling party. You know, you remember a phenomenon, a, a, a trend that was happening during the Buhari administration. It really came into power. You saw that people that have been either been indicted or alleged of corruption started moving into the APC. They began to move en masse into the APC, including the governors, hoping that they'll be protected by the powers of the incumbency. And to a large extent, they, they succeeded in getting away with so many things. They got, they got away with so many things, so many infractions, so many corruption allegations. So there are pending allegations for over 10 years now that the APC has abandoned, but they are going after people they, they, they have been given authorization to go and prosecute. Yeah, but uh, Ni Nigerians are just wondering, because you said for EFCC to, to, to behave like that, to, to go after somebody, it's like they say uh, in the local communities that when a, a small boy uh, confronts you in the early morning, know that an elder is somewhere backing him mm -hmm. up. Otherwise, he cannot talk to you the way he's talking to you. Uh, so yes, now, uh, if we talk about EFCC being political, do you think this is... An exercise that will come to fruition or it is an exercise in futility and we're wasting our time we should move to something else that is better he's the he's the chairman of uh, the ruling APC do you think anything will come out of this uh, you see I my I just hope that the current state government will have the courage to go the whole hall about this matter and refuse to be cowed and refuse to be intimidated and refuse to be dissuaded from going ahead with this. We need to know the truth. We need closure on this issue. So that that, that must not be that must not be unnecessary political intervention from the federal government on this matter. It needs to go and answer to his to these allegations about him. So I yes, the Nigerian way one is not totally optimistic about the fact that uh, maybe something will come out of this. But since it is the Kano state government that is handling this matter, I, I, I'm sure they will use every instrumentality and equipment of the law to make sure to get to him. Because also there will be public pressure. Like I told you, the civil society will not, will not, be, will not, will not be silent. The opposition parties will not keep quiet. We will continue to... We, 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 it's, it's, it's a necessary and important advocacy for everybody now to ensure that Gandhi that, that goes and answer to those allegations that have been leveled against him. The, it, the question cannot, now is, the question uh, now is, does the, the state have that kind of power? Because you were just advocating uh, EFCC to be in every state some kind of independence for the state EFCC as it is. Uh, so now that it has not happened that way, do you think it, with all the arsenal that a uh, kind of state might have, they can pull that off. This is our country where you find a, a governor winning at the Supreme Court and then even the opposition party coming out to congratulate and thank the president for not intervening, for not, for not um, uh, influencing the judgment, which means they know that it is a possibility and these things happen. And they were saying, oh, thank you, Mr. President, for not influencing it. I said, I mean, who does that? If the law has charged someone, is the law, if the law has given someone the right to be whatever he is, then why are you coming to tell us that uh, it could have been influenced by the president? Which means there's something fundamentally wrong that makes Nigerians to just look at it and say, will, it, will anything good come out of it?
So if it is a, a, a because right now we have had some some uh, organizations coming to say, and hey, now you want to probe Ganduji, probe all other governors that have come even before Ganduji. That is on the other side now. So we are having you know opposition and the people for and against and all that. So if we are wasting our time, shouldn't we just go, move on to something else? You see, the good thing about all these things is, the, is that uh, NMPP is the party in power in Kano State. Yeah. So it, 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 um, it becomes very difficult for anybody to influence them otherwise, to, 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 to influence the, go, uh, the current governor otherwise. What I do know that Gabi might try to do. Uh, in fact, it's interesting. I was telling a friend, I was... <laughs> I was I called a friend in Kano this morning. I asked I, I, I messaged him that how far he said that we going to Kano to celebrate the in the victory because I don't see him going to Kano anytime soon. If you understand what I mean, yeah. Because you will, be, will be. I mean that is one good that is one good thing about this because he he, he knows that he does not he cannot move freely in Kano State now. He is not like I will be surprised if he goes home to celebrate the the victory. So um. Yeah, you see the opposition parties of figures who are called, thanking the president for not intervening in the election address of that or whatever the litigation they, they had. You know, in the in the in the euphoria of victory, sometimes people miss miss jive, you know, they just say things as a, I think it's in the euphoria of the moment that uh, somebody could say that because or oh, oh, uh, uh, is the president supposed to intervene? In a legal judicial process, mm. process at all, whatsoever. Mm -hmm. But it also shows you. I mean, I, I'm not going to defend that because it shows you how how our facades, our social, political, and judicial system, you know, has been. It's quite unfortunate because it shows. If, the, if somebody say that, it shows that oh, okay, the president had the capacity yeah. to influence the outcome of a judicial process, and then we have to thank the president for for for, for letting go for not. Uh, Doing, I mean, it's quite unfortunate. It's a, uh, it's quite funny, peculiar. You know, it's part of the rot in our social political system that we need to. It's part of the cancer. It's part of the cancerous element within the political system of the, of the country called Nigeria. But I, you see, something like EFCC would not, would not have been, wouldn't have had the temerity to go after Gambuji the way the Kano State Anti-Corruption Agency has gone after him. Because it is chairman of the of, of, of the ruling party, mm. uh, but now the beauty of it is that we have a state anti-corruption agency saying that the former governor did this, did that. We need to investigate it. We have investigated. We have our facts. We have our evidence. It needs to be prosecuted. It needs to face the law, and that is that's how it should be. That's how it should run. Because you know the beauty of democracy is that one party cannot perpetuate itself in power. If your party will defend you. Another party will come tomorrow that is coming to open the books, open your file, and they go after you. That is the beauty of democracy. That is the beauty of law. That is the beauty of the of the legal processes. You understand? That is the beauty of the rule of law. So I, I, I want to give you will see that the state anti-corruption agencies will be more effective than the than the national one. That's why I said let the EFC and SBC deal with corruption matters that have to do with the federal, they let them deal with their president, their ministers, the DGs, and everything else. Federal government ministries are processors and agencies. And let the state deal with because when you give the state the monthly allocation, it's their money. It is their money. So the, the the federal government has no right to dictate to the state how they how they manage their money, how they administer their money. Because they, like I said, they use that. And unfortunately, you see that when a governor steals money from the state and that money is recovered, it is not returned to that state. Too. Mm. Sometimes that you know you see that, that there will be banters between the federal government and the state. I say no, this is our money. The money you have recovered should return to our state. <laughs> you know, I, I'm sure you have seen that. You have seen that before. Yeah. We are states. Reverse state, state, yes. fighting over it. Recover the recover money. You know, but the federal government will come out and say, okay, when all the money stolen by Abacha that we are recovering, we are also redistributing, redistributing to the state. Of course, we don't have any evidence of how the Abacha loot has been managed. What we are hearing is that the loot has been looted. So <laughs> it's quite unfortunate. Let the federal government deal with it. At the level of the federal government, whatever corruption allegations or issues or incidences of crime that has been committed, at the level of federal government, let the FCC and HBC deal with that. Let every state have their own anti-corruption agencies to deal with local issues. 
to deal with their own local state issues so that there's no incident of uh, political persecution that the president the all-powerful president will say this person is a political enemy this governor belongs to the, to the opposition even within their own party anybody they, they, that has fallen out of favor they, they send the efcc after them so the goes to the god of the with which the with which he just goes after some individuals sometimes you just see that oh no 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 this is how uh, when the, the the real corruption issues they will abandon those ones and go after probably people who have even done very well in office just because those ones are falling out of political for, for, for the sake of political correctness and it is not that is not how to fight corruption uh, when worry came Everybody, including yours truly, believed that oh, this man, because of our experiences in 1984, how, how he did it and everything, oh, he was coming, he was coming to reform the country, he was coming to fight corruption. We couldn't have been more wrong. We couldn't have been more wrong. This was a man, I, I mean, I don't want, in fact, go ahead, let's just leave that <laughs> on the door. Hopefully, we are not seeing anything too much uh, different uh, in the current dispensation. Okay. Hopefully. No, no, I, I was just saying, okay, because um, I was taking your final word. Um, maybe your, your, the lessons that we need to learn from here, uh, from this probe of Ganduji, uh, that he's going to be arraigned, the former governor and current chairman of APC. What lessons can we learn here? What can we, can we build on uh, as time goes on, as we wrap up on the show? Uh, first and foremost, I want to encourage the, uh, His Excellency, uh, former Governor Gandhiji to be a man of honor. He has been in, uh, invited to be a man of honor and uh, and go and defend himself in court. But the lessons we should, we, we have, we should learn from this is that, number one, we know that corruption is killing this country. We have to kill corruption. Number two is that the lessons we are learning is that uh, the corruption agencies, unfortunately, are not doing what the constitution says they should do. What they are doing is they are doing the political bidding of those in power, which is very, very unfortunate. They are persecuting people that are falling out of uh, political favors, and they should not be doing that. Uh, another lesson here is for Nigerians to know that uh, we cannot sit back, back and be complaining only about uh, bad governance and corruption. We need to do something about it. We need to condemn it. We need to be active in the advocacy against corruption. We need to be able to hold people to account who we know that have resources and, you know, properties that are far beyond the parts of their offices. If you are on 200,000 Naira well, as a local government uh, councillor per month, well, you have to get money to buy a 2024 Range Rover. So it must be a process of corruption. And we don't have to wait for the FCC before we get to shout and make noise and, call, and petition the legislative agencies to go after him. Once they know that they have no ID place with their loot, they will stop looting. That's the major lesson for all of us as Nigerians, regular Nigerians, activists, politicians, and everybody that means well for this country. Because we do know that where we are today, the suffering in the land, the hardship in the land, the economic backwardness in the land, the development backwardness in the land is majorly the responsibility of corruption and corrupt public office holders. We need to kill corruption so that it does not kill us, it does not kill the future of our children. That is a collective responsibility, not that, just that of anti-corruption organizations. And we must stop the political persecution of innocent people. Okay. Thank you so much, Comrade, for being a part of our program and sharing your thoughts this morning with us. Thank you so much for having me. Mm. Thank you so much. Yeah. We've been talking uh, to uh, Comrade Mark Adebayo, National Spokesperson, Coalition of United Political Parties, CUPP. And we were looking at the fact that Ganduje will be arraigned on bribery charges in Kanu. This is where we draw the curtain on today's uh, program. And we're hoping that you are going to join us again tomorrow for another edition of The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Until then, I'd like to say Barakat de Salah to you and uh, uh, see you tomorrow. My name is Nyamgul Agaji.